Colombia, there were still 25,000 Khmer Rouge all across the countryside. The roads into their areas were all mined. No one could get in. I went to the prime minister and I said, you know, I had learned a lesson in Vietnam about roads and seeds. And together, I'll put in $13 million. That was all of our aid program for Cambodia to improve the roads and bring in the seeds. But we have to demine the roads. We have to go in and demine them first. And so together with the Cambodian government, they provided the deminers and I went out with them. I had to show that leadership again. And I walked down the roads with the deminers. I knelt next to them as with our trowels, we'd be digging in the sand, trying to hit the metal of a mine. And then you carefully uncover it. Someone comes in, sets a, an explosive charge and one by one, you would get rid of them. Well, this worked. This plan worked. And in March of 1999, before I was uh, in my tour as ambassador, just a couple of months, uh, a call came and the prime minister said, the last Khmer Rouge just surrendered. We had eradicated the worst genocidal, mass murdering terrorist organization of the second half of the 20th century using that formula of roads and seeds, of building peace through agriculture. I retired in 1999, came home to Iowa, took over the leadership of the World Food Prize. It was, had been started by Nobel Peace Prize recipient, Dr. Norman Borlaug. He envisioned a great thing, it was a $250,000 prize. And I set out to fulfill his dream. His dream was that people would come to consider it as the Nobel Prize for Food and Agriculture. And I invited speakers from all over the world. Vice President Xi Jinping came to Des Moines for the US-China High Level uh, Agricultural Symposium of which we were the host and sponsor. Um, Tony Blair came, Kofi Annan, Ban Ki-moon, uh, Princess Haya bint uh, Hussein, Al Hussein, the UN messenger of peace, the daughter of King Hussein. And then I had Israeli irrigation uh, engineers and Palestinians from the West Bank. We had African women smallholder farmers. And in 2009, Bill Gates came to Des Moines. And on the stage of the World Food Prize, and we all know Bill Gates, can give a speech wherever in the world he wants, but he chose to come to Des Moines and from our stage launched his multi-billion dollar effort to end poverty and uplift Africa. So for 20 years, I worked towards that. And in October of 2019, my very last symposium, I chose the title of Pax Agricultura. Not like Pax Romana, but Pax Agricultura peace through agriculture. I thought it was the theme that ran through my career. And I invited the former director of national intelligence, had five or six ambassadors, people from China, from Egypt, from Europe. And then a friend of mine, a colleague named Pat Sheik, uh, contacted me and she said, oh, uh, do you have room for another speaker? Uh, I have somebody interesting. I said, oh, Pat, you know, we're pretty tight. And she said, well, this is a, a woman who's leading an organization in Vietnam, demining and promoting agricultural development. So of course I was intrigued. And she said, her name is Heidi Kuhn. And so I wrote a nice letter to Heidi Kuhn and invited her to come and be a featured speaker at our symposium. And we met for the first time at a, before a luncheon of our high level speakers and uh, I just, shook hands and Pat introduced us and Heidi was telling me all of her work and landmines. I don't think she knew I had any background in landmines. And I said to her, Heidi, you know, what really intrigues me is even 80 years after the end of World War II, the last casualty of that conflict has yet to take place because there are still landmines there that are going to explode and wound or kill somebody. And that sentence uh, was the connection between us. And Heidi was so terrific, so inspiring in our symposium. We hit it off so well. And she said, uh, 
you and your wife, Le Sun, you have to come to Vietnam with us on January 1st. Uh, and we'll go to Quang Tri and go back to the minefield. And so we did. And there we are going through the minefields once again in Quang Tri, where there's so much has been done, but still so much more to be done. And uh, I came to see what an incredibly inspiring figure Heidi was, that wherever she went, she would be down embracing uh, farmers who had lost a hand, lost a foot, women who had lost a child to landmines. She would cry with them, hug with them. And then she'd be also be pushing on the officials to do more and encouraging them and always seeing that that future that we should be working to. So I was hooked. I uh, became uh, an, a senior advisor to Roots of Peace to uh, work with Heidi. I think we all have this. We're all uh, drawn to her in so many ways. But as more and more we've been and I've learned about her, uh, my admiration and respect only grows. She had uh, faced cancer, received the last rites, but overcame that. And now she and Gary have both had COVID and they've beaten that back. And, uh, and here she is tonight, uh, continuing to lead the charge, continuing to hold that banner, the torch high and lead us ahead. You know, I sent her an article that said, Cambodia could be mine free in five years. And I said, wouldn't it be wonderful Vietnam could be mine free in five years. Uh, and that in 2025, when we come back together for the 30th anniversary of US Vietnamese diplomatic relations being established, that we could raise a glass and celebrate that thanks to Roots of Peace and all of the work by so many people that those terrible, terrible scourge of landmines would finally be removed from those countries. And so it's my great pleasure and honor to introduce the founder and CEO of Roots of Peace, Heidi Kuhn. Thank you, Ambassador Quinn, for your gracious remarks. It was truly an honor to walk the minefields of Vietnam with you earlier this year. I want to take you back to the beginning of Roots of Peace when it all started. In September 1997, I watched in horror with the rest of the world, the tragic news of the death of Princess Diana and Dodi Al-Fayed. I was deeply inspired by her efforts to eradicate landmines in the final year of her life and wanted to do something to honor her work and her memory. Coincidentally, I was asked by the Commonwealth Club of California to host a delegation of landmine removal activists at our home. And as host, I lifted my glass in a visionary toast, may the world go from mines to vines, with the idea of replacing landmines with grapevines. The next week, I approached legendary California vintners who understood the plight of farmers unable to cultivate their fields due to the explosive remnants of war. It was a harvest season and the aroma of fresh grapes was fragrant in the Napa Valley. Together, we could not imagine farmers whose ancient lands were riddled with landmines and reaped only a deadly harvest. It was a humanitarian observation, not a political one. Armed only with a vision, three intrepid California business leaders, Eric Wente of Wente Vineyards, Tor Kenward of Behringer, and Robert Mandavi Canada joined me to witness the historic signing of the Ottawa Treaty to ban landmines. While the United States was not a signatory to the treaty, it was the largest global demining clearance organization contributing $3 billion during the past 20 years. Today, there are 164 state parties to the treaty, which comprehensively bans the use, production, stockpiling, and transfer of anti-personnel landmines and aims to create a landmine-free world. While we celebrate the progress broadly made on treaty goals, the annual Landmine Monitor Report recorded a higher number of casualties during the past five years caused by unexplosive remnants of war, primarily farmers and children. In 2019, there were 5,000 
554 casualties reported worldwide, with over 80% civilians. The fear of landmines prevents farmers from cultivating their fields and holds the land hostage for generations to come. Mm -hmm. Roots of Peace in, believes in cultivating peace through agriculture and restoring the value chain. So what does this mean? That by removing landmines, planting high value crops and providing access to new markets through export and trade, we create sustainable grounds for the business and economics of peace to thrive. Tonight, we honor four extraordinary global citizens who continue to inspire us by contributing to our success in healing the wounds of war. In 2007, our initial awardees were Her Majesty Queen Noor and Croatian-born Mijenko Mike Gergic, who helped us turn mines to vines in his beloved homeland following the Balkan War, where 1.2 million landmines were laid. In the first year of the new millennium, we walk through these deadly minefields of his childhood together, only to witness the devastation caused by the legacy of war. We returned to the Napa Valley and engaged hundreds of vintners to raise both funds and awareness for the eradication of landmines in dozens of villages. Today, Croatia is one of the top tourist destinations in the world, producing fine wines on former battlefields in my lifetime, I have personally witnessed that peace is possible from the ground up. Following the 9-11 attacks on the United States, Roots of Peace focused on the vineyards of Afghanistan, a country 80% dependent upon agriculture. Diane Disney Miller, daughter of Walt Disney and owner of Silverado Vineyards in the Napa Valley, generously donated $200,000 to implement our vision of turning mines to vines in the Shamali Plains, located north of Kabul. We partnered with Martin Barber, director of the United Nations Mine Action Service and the Halo Trust Demining Organization to remove over 100,000 unexploded ordnance in the vineyards which were both burned and mined by the Taliban to destroy the spirits of the farmers. Once the landmines were safely removed, the United States Agency for International Development further embraced our vision to grow fresh grapes and raisins on former war-torn lands. Together, we introduced grape trellising and greatly improved the harvest of fruits at midday, normally dragged to market on burlap sacks, where these farmers expected only to reap a meager harvest and a meager profit. Through USAID funding, Roots of Peace introduced cold storage refrigeration in Mirbachakot, north of Kabul. And the corrugated boxes and sanitary packing techniques opened up these fresh fruits to the supply and demand in new markets. For nearly two decades, we have planted over 5 million fruit trees, impacting over 1 million farmers and families. And working with our partners, we have increased agricultural exports from $250 million in 2014 after a Taliban attack. We hung in there to, to, with our partners with the Roots of Peace and USAID CHAMP program, Commercial Horticultural Agricultural Marketing Program. We increased those exports to over $1.4 billion by the end of 2020. Roots of Peace has successfully managed over $100 million under contract and recently signed an additional contract with, the, with USAID, UNDP, and INL, totaling an additional $75 million to provide exports to new markets and restore Afghanistan as the garden of Central Asia. As the intra-Afghan peace talks made history today, with talks progressing with the Taliban, Roots of Peace is poised to lead with the shovel and not the sword in the most remote regions of Afghanistan. Kandahar, Helmand, Fada, Nangahar, we are leading with, by providing jobs for both men and women and providing hope for future generations of Afghan farmers to thrive. Every step of the way, people told us that it was impossible for a California family to impact sustainable peace across the globe. Each time we stumbled, 
we dusted off our knees and kept walking in faith, not fear. Over the years, we have removed landmines in the fields of Bethlehem, working with Christians, Jews, and Muslims alike. And we have cleared ancient migration routes for elephants to walk safely along the Trans Frontier Park in Angola. Children now play soccer on former minefields where Princess Diana once walked in Huambo. The footsteps of both humans and animals have been spared by our advocacy in both the Middle East and Africa. The year 2020 has been as significant as it marks the 45th anniversary of the end of the Vietnam War. I was only 17 years old and wanted to pursue a career in peace after serving as an exchange student from the Rotary Club of San Rafael, California to the Rotary Club of Utsunomiya, Japan. I learned firsthand that former enemies could be friends and decided to pursue a career in peace. This is also the year of the 23rd and 25th anniversary of normalization of bilateral relations between the United States and Vietnam. Yet today, millions of unexploded remnants of war remain buried in the ground long after the guns of war have silenced. Since the war ended on April 30th, 1975, over 100,000 innocent footsteps of Vietnamese children or farmers have been maimed or killed by these hidden killers. Our battle cry, Ambassador Quinn, is peace through agriculture. And we hope you will join us in this fight by raising both awareness and funds to remove the legacy of war and literally plant the roots of peace in Vietnam. It's time for the war to end. Our current mission is to raise $20 million to remove all unexploded remnants of war and plant high value black pepper vines on the former battlefields of Quang Tri province, the former DMZ. While there will soon be a vaccine to the phantom enemy of COVID-19, there is no cure for the hidden killer of landmines other than removal. This is a time in our world to think big. Together, let us create fertile grounds for peace for the next generation to thrive. Now, Cheryl, back to you as we begin this exciting award ceremony during this season of peace on earth. Heidi, thank you so much. What a story. And Ambassador Quinn, thank you for telling your story as well about the connection between the two of you about seeds and roads and demining. We really appreciate it. All right, we now are going to move on to meet the first of our four incredible honorees. Frank Yi is joining us from Shanghai. Mr. Yi was born there, but he has deep roots in the San Francisco Bay Area. In the early 1960s, he was a pioneer at Fairchild in the Silicon Valley, helping develop the semiconductor, which drives technology today. He developed many professional skills and contacts in various countries over the years in Asia and then revisited China in 1986. He started investing in his country there in 1992. So if you are a Rotary Club member, you're going to love this. He is past president of the Rotary Club of Shanghai and established more than 26 Rotary Clubs in China under his term as a Rotary International Special Representative from 2016 to 2018. And Mr. Yi established the Wa Chao Foundation with the goal of bridging borders of collaboration and cooperation. Mr. Yi is now working hard with others on helping us all through the COVID-19 pandemic. Mr. Yi is a dear friend of Roots of Peace. Having donated $150,000 to the agricultural program in Vietnam, it's one of his largest ever donations. So please welcome Frank Yi. Thank you, sir, for accepting Ruth of Peace Global Citizen Award. You say that you have gone from high tech to low tech with a passion for building peace. Mr. Yi, thank you. Distinguished journalist, Cheryl Janice, thank you for hosting this and broadcasting this Ruth of Peace Global Citizen Award. Thank you, our dear peace lover, the dynamic Heidi Kuhn from the Beer family. 
who is inspiring all of us to do more, to remove the mines and make this earth a safer heaven for farmers world over. Thank you so much for your Global Citizen Award, which will surely remind four of us to do our best, bringing peace close to everyone's doorstep. Please allow me to say a few words, introduce myself. I'm Frank Yi. The children we served affectionately call me Grandpa Yi Ye Ye. I was born in Shanghai, China, spent teenage years in Shanghai and Hong Kong, attended university in London and got my master BSc degree in MIT, majoring in chemical engineering. My first job was a process engineer in Fairchild Semiconductor Incorporated, the pioneer of semiconductor and microchip located in Mountain View, California, USA. And my main contribution to the industry was to introduce plastic materials to encapsulate the silicon microchips. And then years later, brought the labor extensive IC assembly manufacturing operation <clears throat> to the Far East, where the labor was only 10 cents per hour. In short, I was able to bring microchips to the affordable level for commercial application. In the meantime, I helped to train 10,000 poor female young workers to improve their standard of living with a decent wage. After 32 years of high tech, I began to turn my attention to low tech, which is the financial fee, decent living, good health, and returned to my birthplace, Shanghai, to become a landlord. So collecting rent and I happily do charity projects. I revived the Shanghai Rotary Club, which is number two oldest club in Asia, a few months after number one club in Manila, and I served eventually as the president of the club in 2014 and 2015. Eventually, I became the special rep of Rotary International to China, which is equivalent to a district governor for two years, 2016-2018. In Christmas Day, or the day before, 2017, when I visited San Francisco number two Rotary Club, who is the sister club of Shanghai, I missed with Heidi. And she told me all about Rotary Peace, transforming minefields to vanguards. <clears throat> I'm amazed and greatly impressed. And next day, she invited me to visit her home in San Rafael and overlooking the Richmond Beautiful Bridge and toured the China camp in San Rafael Beach, where her grand great father helped 500 Chinese railway into the country, the railway workers to do shrimp farming for export back to China in the, 90, in the 1880s. I quickly released my arms and told Rotarians, I'm putting up 1 million RMB to support Roots of Peace, to transform minefields to vanguards. And next spring, 2018, I invited her to be our keynote speaker in the Rotary China district and a tour in China, and we climbed the Great Wall. We also visited Vietnam twice, managed to meet the Vietnam government officials, and to find a way to establish a sure way to sustain peace in Vietnam. Heidi appointed me as chair of Rotary Peace, which I would not have done. I really am amazed with her energy, you know, and she's a victim of uh, uh, COVID-19 today, and yesterday she was still coughing, and today she looks beautifully on the screen. In conclusion, I often told myself, when I walk into a bathroom in the airplane, going somewhere for business or pleasure, making sure the bathroom is cleaner when you leave than you enter. If everyone on Earth practice simple habit, we will see a beautiful clean world with no rubbish and surely no mines. I think it would not be a good news for you. If the high COVID-19 nation uh, high, are willing to learn some of the more successful prevention 
COVID nations like Singapore, only 29 casualties with about 58,000 uh, uh, infected. And perhaps even China will just bring us benefit, uh, lowering the COVID-19 casualty and less financial losses. Ladies and gentlemen, you have a good friend in Shanghai who is a peace lover, willing and capable to spend the rest of his life to bring peace to the world. And uh, thank you, peace-loving friends. Roots of peace, Cheryl, now back to you. Thank you. Mr. Yi, thank you so much for your wonderful contributions to Roots of Peace and your contributions to the world. Thank you very much. Our next distinguished honoree is Morton Gotthelf in Northern California. He is also deeply involved with the Roots of Peace farming program in Vietnam with his nationally known high-end spice company called Morton and Bassett Spices. It's based in Rohnert Park, north of San Francisco. Mr. Gotthelf was a navigator in the United States Air Force, retired in 1961. He was a chemical engineer who had a successful career as a biotech instrument entrepreneur. He also loves to cook. So that's why he created his spice business in his Northern California garage. Well, it's grown to be one of the top spice companies in America today. And his company buys highly prized black pepper from the Roots of Peace Farming Program in Quang Tri Province, the Black Pepper Vine Program. Morton and Bassett is now selling this spice across the country with the Roots of Peace logo on every single bottle. And Mr. Gotthelf's son, Rodney Gotthelf, will be accepting the award on behalf of his father, who unfortunately is ill. Rodney is the president of Morton and Bassett, so we're very fortunate to have him with us today. Now, Mr. Gotthelf, your company is also deeply devoted to local charities, and we thank you for that as well. So thank you for accepting the Roots of Peace Global Citizen Award on behalf of your father. And we certainly hope that he gets better soon. So please go ahead. Thank you, Cheryl. And hello, everyone. I wanna share a few words here and then show a short video that Cheryl produced about our company and the partnership with Roots of Peace and Black Pepper. She did a fantastic job on it and I really look forward to sharing that with everyone here. And thank you, Heidi. It's a double honor for me here tonight. First, Heidi, congratulations on such a wonderful event because of your voice and indeed everyone at Roots of Peace that has brought us together tonight. Your commitment to replacing the remnants of war with grapes and fruit and saffron and yes, black pepper does really plant peace and prosperity around the world. And it changes the lives of so many people. And I can only imagine the deep satisfaction you feel when you see all the roots of peace black pepper that ships to our facility. It is a capstone on your passion to eradicate all those buried munitions. Your passion allows people to become empowered and live a more whole and prosperous life. And second, and, while I'm, and why I'm here, it's a supreme honor for me to accept this award on behalf of my father. Little did he know he would be here today, whether as just a young 25 year old flying around the world in the service of his country, or as a chemical engineer working on all sorts of solutions I never understood, or as an entrepreneur starting a spice company on his dining room table, something I do understand. Little did he know that he would have such an impact on the lives of not just those who might work for him directly, but those who do not. And here we're talking namely about the farmers thousands of miles away growing black pepper for Roots of Peace that is so committed to removing the landmines and turning those former battlefields into fields of peace, excuse me, peace and prosperity. So dad, love you. We're all hoping for your speedy recovery. And it's been great to work with you these past decades and proud of you and proud to accept this award on your behalf. So congratulations to you. Congratulations to Roots of Peace. And now Cheryl, I'd like to ask you if you'd please play that video I first mentioned. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Well, this is a historic moment for Roots of Peace at Morgan Bassett to have a world-class spice company purchasing fresh pepper from the former battlefields of Vietnam 40 years after the war has ended. The first major shipment of black pepper grown by Vietnamese farmers in the Roots of Peace program is being marketed and sold by a major Bay Area spice importing company. Morton and Bassett is in Roner Park. Roots of Peace is based in San Rafael. The founders, Heidi and Gary Kuhn, and most of their family are involved in some way. A number of them showed up to see the first big shipment, including Heidi's 88-year-old father. The Kuhn's son, Tucker, worked with Vietnamese men and women to run the program in Quang Tri province. It used to be a notorious battleground. Now it's connecting Vietnamese farmers and American consumers through spices. We're very happy that they picked us out to uh, be a major supplier of the product. Well, we're really enthusiastic about working with Roots of Peace and being able to bring their fruits of their labor to the market, not just here in the Bay Area, but all around the country. The Roots of Peace story that ended up at Morton and Bassett in Sonoma County started in Vietnam in 2010. They had to get permission first from the communist Vietnamese government to work there. The partnership also includes the U.S. Department of State and MAG, the demining organization known as Mines Advisory Group. Farmers put up their own money in a training program to learn how to grow pepper vines or taro on land that used to be riddled with landmines, an unexploded ordinance. All of that was left over from the American Vietnam War more than 40 years ago. And sadly, many farmers were injured and maimed before the Roots of Peace program began working with MAG. But the farmers don't let their injuries stop them from growing crops that are lifting them out of poverty. And it's sending a message that former enemies can learn to work in harmony. I think uh, it brings the world together and it makes everybody think of peace in this uh, era of real problems that we've had over many decades. Morton and Bassett is asking to buy all the pepper that Roots of Peace can import from Vietnam and they appreciate what it takes to grow the pepper on more torn land. They've done a wonderful job with an enormous challenge to clean up all these mines and munitions. And my hat is off to them, and we're just honored that they selected us to be a partner. Vietnam today has an estimated 3 million landmines and more, and here we are in Morton Bassett, removing these landmines and literally giving people a taste of peace. This is a major business transaction, and to sell this fresh pepper from the former battlefields of Vietnam makes this American mother very, very proud. Cheryl Jennings, ABC 7 News. We want to thank Rodney Godhelf for accepting the award on behalf of his father, and we want to thank Morton Godhelf for his service to this country in the United States Air Force. Our next esteemed honoree is Klaus Nobel. He is the CEO of the nonprofit United Earth. He's in Portland, Oregon. Mr. Nobel is an advocate of humanitarian and environmental causes. He's a native of Sweden and is the grandnephew of Albert Nobel, after whom the Nobel Prize is named. Klaus Nobel drafted an extraordinary document in 1974. It's called the Nobel Laureate's Declaration on the Survival of Mankind. And it was signed by 78 Nobel laureates advocating support for environmental protection and humanitarian leadership. In 2018, Klaus Nobel presented the very first Earth Ethics Award to Roots of Peace at the United Nations in honor of the Roots of Peace global effort to transform landmines to grapevines and black pepper vines. Mr. Nobel's son, Marcus, traveled to Vietnam with Heidi to detonate cluster munitions in war-torn Quang Tru province. For Klaus and Marcus, this was an act of peace because their ancestor, Alfred Nobel, invented dynamite. Mm. Mr. Nobel has been ill, unfortunately, so his son Marcus has graciously agreed to accept the Roots of Peace Global Citizen Award on his father's behalf. Marcus, thank you so much for being with us and our best wishes to your beloved father. Thank you, uh, Cheryl, for those, those kind words. And, and Rodney, I too am here on behalf of my father. He's uh, 91 and uh, was unable to attend, but Heidi, he is very grateful 
for uh, this great uh, award and thank you so much. And I just wanted to explain a little bit about how I met Heidi and what an incredible impact it, it's had on my life. I've never been to Vietnam. My first thought was, sure, I'll go there, but I'm pretty sure they all hate Americans. You know, we bombed them. We sprayed orange, orange, Agent Orange everywhere. And then the most amazing thing happened. Um, we took a, a, a little shuttle bus to the Quang Tri province. And um, Vietnam is beautiful and the people are nice. The food is wonderful. I, I was, you know, Aristotle is right. Travel is the best education. And I was learning so much. As we drove to the sites of the landmines, I saw this white SUV and it had an American flag on it. And it had a skull and crossbones on it. And I thought, this is not good. This, what's going on here? But what I learned was that there was a mine advisory group, the, uh, the zappers that actually pull the, the unexploding ordinances out of the ground. And I also learned that in the Vietnam War, there was more bombs, more ordnance dropped on that tiny little country than in all of World War I and World War II combined. I, it was shocking. So here we are at this beautiful uh, spot in the Quang Tri province. I remember it like it was yesterday. You could smell the ocean air coming off, it was humid. There was like this white coral sand that would crunch a little bit everywhere you walked. And as Ambassador Quinn said too, there are a few rules, be very careful where you step. And uh, we came there and we were given an overview of how the process worked, what we were to do, what we were not to do, who, who some of the local employees were. And I had a really amazing experience. In the ground, there was a mortar shell. It was about the size of a Coke bottle. It, it was all rusty. It was three feet in the ground. It was 60 years old. Uh, I was sure it would never blow up. And then Heidi and I had the opportunity to, to press the detonator button. It was 250 yards away. Boom. I felt that concussion in my chest. I was floored. I was like, oh my God, all these bombs are still active. And as we sat there and talked about it, this cloud of smoke rolled in. And then one of the Australian sappers said, oh yeah, mate, that's the smell of cordite. I thought, my God, Alfred Nobel invented cordite. So here was this whole circle of, of uh, the Nobel values, the Nobel prizes. And Heidi, I do believe that you are in the running for the Nobel Peace Prize at some point. And Ambassador Quinn, yes, there should be a Nobel Prize for agriculture. Uh, and as a side note, my father met many times with Norman Borlaug. He was exceptionally kind and generous with his time, as was Linus Pauling. And I guess it shows that, you know, the most important things are sometimes done by people who have started with a box of letters and licking stamps in their basement. And Heidi, you are an example to all of us uh, who believe in the power and the good that just one person could do. So thank you so much for this opportunity and on behalf of my father, Klaus Nobel. Thank you very much. Marcus, thank you so much for being here to accept the award on behalf of your father. And we certainly hope that he is feeling better soon. Thank you. All right, our next inspiring honoree is the actress turned activist and educator, beloved Hollywood actress, Diane Baker in Los Angeles. Ms. Baker has served on the board of directors for Roots of Peace since 2004. Her movie career is legendary, appearing with Sean Connery, Gregory Peck, Paul Newman and Edward G. Robinson and worked with Alfred, I mean, <laughs> Alfred Newman, no, no, Alfred Hitchcock on uh, the movie Marnie. Miss Baker made her film debut in a movie that everybody either has seen or probably should see. It's so good and she is so good in it. It's called The Diary of Anne Frank. Miss Baker also starred in Silence of the Lambs. And she produced and starred in a movie, a six hour mini series called A Woman of Substance. Ms. Baker is currently creating a postgraduate nonprofit program called Global Film Connect for actors and filmmakers in Hollywood in honor of Robert Osborne, who is the recent host of TCM. Ms. Baker walked the minefields of Croatia and Afghanistan with Heidi Kuhn for Roots of Peace 
and produced short documentaries of that work being done by Roots of Peace in Angola, Afghanistan, and Croatia. Hmm. So Ms. Baker works tirelessly to expand the Roots of Peace business model to further the economics of peace through agriculture around the world. Thank you so much, Diane Baker, for accepting the Roots of Peace Global Citizen Award. It's amazing how Heidi can just get anybody to go with her to all these war-torn countries, including yourself. Uh, Cheryl, thank you so much for that introduction, my Evans. Um, sometimes one forgets what things we have done. Uh, but you have been uh, remarkable in that you've been, a, a, I want to say, a Roots of Peacer since the very beginning with Heidi. And you have really done some remarkable shows, the seven part series on APC and how wonderful that has been for Heidi. Heidi is a miracle. And uh, I, I don't even know where to start. My first meeting with Heidi, a first sight of her was she <laughs> handed me a landmine, an actual real landmine. I mean, we're both going on television in San Francisco and here is Heidi Kuhn, whom I had never heard about or knew about. Uh, Roots of Peace had recently started and she was carrying a landmine. So I am mesmerized. I stood off the side of the, uh, tele uh, the camera and they watched her interview. And I learned so much uh, about what they were doing and what they had contemplated doing and the hard work of uh, managing this throughout the world. So hence, uh, leaping forward, she invited me to become a member of the board of directors. Um, I feel I've done nothing to really help. Um, I feel intimidated by all the great, great work of each of you. Um, I, I, I sometimes think that when Heidi speaks of uh, the passion and the uh, need to do the work, I know we need education and I think from a very early age. I grew up in Hollywood. I became close friends with Melvin Douglas and his wife, Helen Gahagan Douglas, who was at that time when I was eight years old, a congresswoman from the 14th district in Los Angeles. So I became close to the family and became, they became mentors of mine. And I went through all of those periods of McCarthy, the her running for Senate against um, uh, Nixon and what was happening. And I was floored at nine and 10 years old over things that I saw happening. And I just didn't understand how people can be so cruel to other people. So uh, ultimately ended up visiting them in New York where they moved. And uh, I'll never forget the day that brought, brings me to the present in that Melvin uh, was list talking about the world as he often did at six o'clock in the evening with a glass of wine or a martini <laughs> and uh, he said what do you young people know about war you've never had to deal with it here you are young you you romanticize all of it he was furious at we think we know something about the world and we begin to talk like intelligent people suddenly he slammed his fist down on the table and just said you know nothing. Well, that has stayed with me all these years. So the suddenly I'm aware with this landmine in my near my hand, Heidi was holding it, and she walks on the air and talks, and I'm saying, my God, this is real. This is the real thing. This is what people can do to one another. This isn't about, uh, you know, about, uh, this is worse than war. It's uh, an attempt to kill and maim and harm. Um, and so my strong feeling right now is that uh, education is the answer. And I've done a lot of work, nothing satisfied me. I've constantly been unfulfilled and it moved from acting to producing, have to do something meaningful. Finally, it's education. So uh, Heidi, I want to thank you and Gary, your children, and all of the people that are out there in the fields. You are the one that need to be honored, all of you, and will continue to be honored. 
the workers in the fields, the people we met when we were in Croatia walking through Vukovar and seeing the buildings with riveting, with riveted with, with bullets. There were thousands of them. I had never seen such uh, a, a, a result, a, I guess you'd say a result of war. It's, it sat there. But what you have done is you've walked into these countries. The challenge has been so incredible and you forged your way through. I remember sitting with you in Afghanistan, in Kabul, in a meeting. And uh, I don't know that we ever talked too much about it after, but there was a moment where they treated you like you were a woman who knew nothing, uh, that you should just keep quiet and just be calm and not uh, talk. And I suddenly stopped and I suddenly thought, my God, Here's this woman who's done so much and is out there doing so much. And they think of her as a, well, she's a mother and she doesn't really know what she's doing. And she's this lovely lady. Well, I came to know Heidi and know how strong this woman is and how forceful and how proud she is and how vital she is. And I have to applaud Gary Hume for being there with her and being for her. And it is an amazing family and an amazing feat that they have achieved thus far. So I just want to say that um, Roots of Peace is there to be admired and to be worked hard. We need to support them. We need to work hard to help them achieve their goals. Uh, I only know one way to do it, and that's from my point of view. Since I've now become more focused on education and I'm cre creating this school, we really want to create a documentary film division where we can train young people to go out and tell their stories. They can go to Vietnam, meet the young people, sit down with them and work with them to write their own stories, to develop their own short films. And then we bring them back to the United States. And then those young people have a connection with the world. We need to create a space for these young people to tell their stories, where they can learn to make peace through self-discovery, learning to tell their deep stories. And I keep a little post-it on my computer, ignorance leads to fear and fear leads to hatred. Mm. Well, education can lead us out of the ignorance. And therefore we then have to fi figure out what the next step is to get rid of the fear that people are feeling all over the world and then to have no hatred exist. Peace is not easy to achieve, but we have to find a way to do it. And I believe the telling stories and sending those stories out to the human beings that are going to be on these wonderful computers and be on cell phones, we need to reach them through storytelling. And that's why I created this school and why we feel that we can do some good and outreach programs with you, Roots of Peace, with you, Heidi. I will be coming forward with a plan of how we can do some work uh, together and make something happen. And I think it's through education. And I applaud all of you. I applaud you, your family, Heidi, Gary. I applaud the wonderful people that we're with today that are being honored. My heavens, what a prestigious group of people. I have to make one note about Norman Cousins, who also was a big mentor of mine. And my last point is, I sat with Norman over at UCLA many times, the faculty center, and we did a documentary. Um, and I met the young woman from Japan, who was uh, one of the maidens who was blown up and she had no face. All they could see was dark hair. And uh, Shigeko, was brought back to America by Norman and his doctor, Dr. Hitzig, and they gave her reconstructive surgery. So she was alive and well at that time. And she named her son after Norman Cousins. Mm -hmm. So I say that these stories of how to heal, which is where we're at now, we have to heal our nation and we have to heal the world in first steps is through education to meeting one-on-one -on -one and two-on-two -on -two and three and four and five in rooms, in classrooms and discuss and let out this agony and let out this 
personal uh, need. People must know what it feels like to have peace. And that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping to see a little bit of that before I pass away. Anyway, thank you all. Cheryl, over to you. Oh my goodness, Diane. I love the storytelling idea. And uh, I know they're the roots of peacers, as we are now being called, are, are all part of this team. So um, our global citizens, I think that we're probably all gonna wanna help you with that. So. Thank well, you. I want to help Bruce of Peace with the plan that we can do together. And I get certain donations and uh, we hope that you get certain donations eventually. Mm -hmm. And all of this, we can find a way to bring in more people, bring in groups, that care about each other. Just be kind and open your mind and try to see what you can do to give to the other. I love people. it. Similar work. Great, wonderful. Diane, thank you so much. All right, I also wanted to let people know, for those of you who don't know, I'm just gonna sneak this into the program. Heidi is a new author of a book called Breaking Ground. Yes, yeah, so congratulations, Heidi, on your book. Debuted during COVID, you fought and you're beating COVID. So thank goodness for you and your family that you're getting better. Um, I know you have enough energy. We're gonna bring Heidi back. Uh, the CEO of Roots of Peace to offer a congratulatory toast to our four fantastic honorees. Heidi? Oh, well, Cheryl, thank you. You were just amazing. The, the incredible Emmy Award winning, nine times Emmy Award winning journalists. And, uh, uh, you know, you have been like a maestra bringing this important issue of landmines forward. As I close, I just want to, to honor those in my life you know, I, I love the quote by um, Sir Isaac Newton. If I've seen further than others, it's only because I've stood on the shoulders of giants. And those giants in my life were my husband, Gary, my two-year-old son, Christian, my 10-year-old daughter, Kylie, 12-year-old son, Tucker, and 14-year-old son, who today is Dr. Brooks Kuhn in the ICU unit at UC Davis with 70 patients that he is taking care of with COVID-19. And, and when a mother comes home and holds something up that, that's a landmine and, and says to their family in Marin County, California, I wanna remove landmines from the face of the earth. And the courage it took for my children to go back to grammar school and, and, and the mother on the hill is trying to demine the world, create peace on earth. And, and, and because I've watched my children play soccer, you know, this is an anti-personnel landmine. It's buried in the ground. And when climate change happens, you know, it, as it has so tragically last month in, in Vietnam, these, these landmines become virtual before they float down the rivers and, and through the muddy waters when there's excessive um, uh, typhoons. And, and, and when we remove these anti-personnel landmines, these bouncing betties, the 60 million seeds of hatred that we have intentionally planted as human beings after the Civil War, you know, the um, part of the um, uh, preface of my book, Breaking Ground, was written by Dr. Kenneth um, Rutherford, who is a landmine survivor. And, um, you know, he understood personally and touched me so deeply when he explained what landmines do to civilians and animals around the world. But I always look, and I'm optimist, and I think anybody who knows me um, looks at the positive that comes from the earth. And, and I just can't imagine that 23 years ago when I was at the sign of the Ottawa Treaty with two incredible vintners who I believe are on this call, Eric Wente and Tor Kenward, um, but to remove these mines, turn them into black pepper vines. And if you can look closely, this is Morton and Bassett Spice. And on the back of this bottle is the Roots of Peace logo. And um, every single bottle sold on the United States of America on supermarket shelves has this little mines to vines. So uh, thank you, Mort. While you're not here with us physically tonight, you're here with us in spirit from mines to black pepper vines and a little bit of saffron, a little bit of uh, bringing uh, uh, the taste of peace to the world uh, during this traditional season of peace on earth. And um, it is now my great honor to in introduce uh, the global citizen uh, in my life um, uh, for the past 40 years. And um, that is my dear husband, Gary Kuhn, who will lead us all in a Minds to Vines global toast to peace. So if you have a fine bottle of wine, 
glass of grape juice or in uh, China at 10 in the morning, a little cup of tea. <laughs> um, I'd like to introduce Mr. Gary Kuhn, uh, the wind beneath my wings and truly my hero. Um, could never have done this without you, Gary. <laughs> so. so I happen to have a glass here for you, Heidi. Thank so, you, dear. <laughs> just, just taking care of you here. Well, so if you have a glass, please fill it. Uh, it's, it's time to renew kind of the, the, what Heidi started 23 years ago when she made a toast that the world may go from mines to vines. Um, and uh, she's been working on this feverishly, continually, uh, and not slowing down at all. Uh, it, this little train called Roots of Peace doesn't work by itself. The, the four honorees that we're mentioning today haven't played a huge part. They may not think it's a big piece, but it is amazing how much that impact you've had in keeping Roots of Peace moving along. And it's all these people who have contributed, you know, to, to move us along. So this toast is to them and <laughs> to the Heidi's toast. So to Mort and Rodney Gotthelf, to Marcus Klaus, Marcus and Klaus Nobel, Diane Baker, Frank Yee, thank you very much for pushing our little train along here and keeping us moving. And Heidi, I'll let you say the Minds to Vines toast. <laughs> oh, I think together, may the world go from Minds to Vines for the next 23 years. We'll put ourselves out of business. No more landmines. Peace on earth. Cheers. Thank you, Heidi. Thank you, Gary. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Oh. Yes, <laughs> oh, and thank you to Jeff Skoll. <laughs> What a man he is. So in Vietnam, they go, Mot Hai Ba Yo. Hai Ba Yo. I love that. Sherry. Thank you all so much. And to our Roots of Peace staff, 250 employees we have in Afghanistan today. Uh, to our country director, a woman, uh, Lian uh, in Quang Tri, Vietnam, Dr. Bin. Many of you know these names, you've walked the minefields of the world with them, but none of this gets done without the brave uh, people who are on the front line of peace, and those are our employees and um, those who really wear the true badge of courage on the ground. So, um, you know, we toast to you with, with um, respect to all cultures. Of course, uh, you know, uh, grapes are never fermented with due respect to the Muslim culture, but we drink and enjoy a fine glass of grape juice, of pomegranate juice, and again, celebrating the seeds we have in common rather than the seeds that separate us. So Cheryl Jennings, back to you. <clears throat> And again, congratulations to everybody. So thank you, Heidi, Gary, Ambassador Quinn, Frank Yee, Morton Gotthelf, Rodney Gotthelf, Klaus Nobel, Marcus Nobel, and the beautiful Diane Baker. We are at the end of our program, and we want to thank each and every one of you in our international audience for joining us today and tonight, wherever you are in the world. You're invited to join the global efforts of Roots of Peace, and you can find them on social media and on their website, rootsofpeace.org. Please stay safe and well. We hope your holiday season is filled with love and joy. Bye-bye. Thank you.